This is the B3 Radio Network. Radio Network. B3 Radio Network. Visit us online at b3productionstudios.webs.com. In a world where car companies are numbered in the hundreds, Chevrolet, Pontiac, Honda, Mitsubishi, Kawasaki, Cadillac, Oldsmobile, Lotus, Toyota, Lama, Acura, BMW, Ford, 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 Ford. You need to know the facts, the latest information for everything about cars, trucks, motorcycles, and ATVs. This is Speed. That's right. This is Speed on the B3 Radio Network. I am Brian Bombarios, and over there in the corner behind the boards is Boontarn MacGyver Horn. Hello. How are you doing, Boontarn? I'm tired. Tired? <laughs> well, you were at that busy at that class today, huh? Oh, yeah. We didn't do anything in the shop, but there was a uh, he, he did a general layout, and oh, my God. Tip, <laughs> tip the mechanic next time you go. Oh, you were busy over there? No, I mean like that. How much effort they be to they put in to become a mechanic? Oh, how much well, effort they put in? It's a lot of schooling, isn't it? Oh yeah, at least eleven classes. Well, yeah, over yeah. a period of time, isn't it like a you have to get an AA certification stuff like uh, that? Uh, ASE certificate. Uh, but even then, though, to get the ASE certificate, you have to pass I think a total of eight tests per um, per uh, certificate, and then. <laughs> Oh my god! So just a whole bunch of schooling you're doing oh, right now. Oh, a, a lot of schooling. Well, good luck to that man. Ah, uh, thank you. And thank I you. have to say good luck to Mazda because they have a recall notice out. Another company with a big recall. If you have a 2001 to 2002 Mazda, let's see, uh, for the certain year is 0102 would be the. I never. I don't even know they made this car. It's called the trip. The trip. The, the tribute. Yeah. Oh, I, I heard of it. Yeah, a horrible name. <laughs> I, I don't like the name. Yeah. But um, they're recalling it due to a brake master cylinder leak, uh, which could potentially cause a fire if it leaks and uh, hits the wiring harness once again. I think, didn't Ford have that problem? I Last think, week yeah, we they, mentioned had a, it. they had a problem with the wiring, yes. I yeah, the that. problem is that certain 01 and 02 Mazda tributes may uh, have a uh, brake master a cylinder fluid leak, and it can potentially leak onto the 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 harness, which is conveniently located right underneath where it could leak, and that could cause erosion on the cable protection. Isn't that the exact same thing as the yeah? Uh, I think the Ford. yeah. Wait, was and, it Ford or yeah? I'm pretty sure it was the Ford, Ford okay. Escape we mentioned last week. Okay. Well, the exact same problem. Yeah, and hmm. uh, it can yeah. They're saying it could uh, melt the the protection coating on top of the wire, and it can create smoke and fire potential ah. fire. Uh, the fix is that Mazda will start uh, recalling the notices on the 30th, so it would have already passed, so you should be hearing something from Mazda. Uh, and it, They will pay for all the charges and fees uh, for replacing the stuff, obviously, but they're, they're also doing the same thing as Ford, and they're also telling people to not drive their vehicles until they have them fixed. But in this case, they do have the parts ready, oh, so well. you can just come to the dealer as soon as you hear about it and they should be able to fix it within that same day. Wait, oh, I forgot which one it was that we were talking about that had like, I think it was like a that, four year gap and it was like uh, of two months before they could restart fixing it or something like that? That was the Ford. Oh, I don't remember okay. which model, but I remember Ford. They oh, were saying so the same thing where you had to, they were asking people, don't drive your vehicle, but we have we have the recall notices sent to you, but we can't do anything about it until a couple week, months from now because our supplies are not stocked. So... Unfortunately, but if you do have a Mazda uh, tribute, go ahead and call. Uh, there is a f- telephone number, which is 1-248-393-5990 if you have any questions or concerns. And there are a lot of vehicles potentially affected by this. It's fi- 52,390 Whoa, vehicles. That, that's a lot of vehicles. Yeah, but uh, manufactured between April 20th, 2000 and July 19th, 2002. So pretty much a two and a half year, almost two and a half years right there. Uh, with 52,390 vehicles potentially affected by that recall. And that's not the only recall for this week. There's another one, which I'm surprised by this, BMW, which is recalling... uh, But get this, they're only recalling six X5s. Very small number. Only six? Wait, hold on, like... The number six, as in one, two, three, four, five, six. I know, but a total of six? Yes, a total of six uh, BMW X5s. Wow, that's kind of... Yep, they're recalling the 2012 huh. BMW X5 SUVs because of concerns that it could roll away if the parking brake is not applied. Uh, the problem is that an error in the transmission may not allow the engagement of the parking 
uh, lock, even if the vehicle is placed into the gear when you put it into P for park, the lock may not activate. And if you don't put your parking brake on, like mo uh, I usually don't, whenever I'm parking, uh, unless I'm on a hill, I'll put the parking brake on the emergency brake. But if I'm just parking on a flat surface, I never put the parking brake or emergency brake on. There's no point. I, I don't just. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Right, yeah. But um, if you don't, obviously it'll start rolling away. So, yep, BMW is uh, sending notices. Apparently they were manufactured between December 19th, 11, 2011, that is, and December 21st, 2011. And again, only six of them. So if you're one of the lucky six, <laughs> I guess too bad for you. <laughs> uh, there have been no reported deaths or injuries linked to the recall. I don't know how they numbered it just to six, but that is a recall notice. It's one of the few recalls where you actually hear that and it's not going to cost BMW millions. No, but then again, if you think about it, BMW is kind of well maintained. Yes, yeah. They're, they're very, they're like, I think for what I would like to consider them is like, they're like Apple. Apple, the the computer company, they're very picky in what they release. They don't have like third parties like what Microsoft does. You know, you can have Microsoft Windows like on any device or whatever, but Apple is very, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, Particulate? Uh, no, no. No, wait, what the heck? no, that's the wrong word, no. Proprietary software. Propri oh, okay. They're very organized and stuff. And BMW is a luxury brand too, a very expensive luxury brand. One of their cheapest cars, which doesn't have a lot. I think when I was considering buying a car, I was looking to BMW a little while ago, and they start about forty thousand dollars if you want something decent, and it only has like two hundred fifty horsepower. I mean, that's, damn. Yeah, it's not a lot, and it's like you know the the grunt of the of the cars. It only it, you know rear wheel drive, basic satellite radio, HD radio, nothing special in it. So, yeah, but that's BMW. Only six of them affected. Well, like I said, the BMW is well maintained. I did I, I did a brake change on one of them and it and it really actually in actual if you go to if you take the BMW that specific BMW that I changed the brake on to the shop they would have charged you four hundred dollars just to change the brakes. Yeah, luxury brands have the tendency to be very expensive. Yes. I know Lexus does the same, but if you're but Lexus is part of Toyota, isn't it? It is, but it's a luxury brand, yeah, at least here in the United true. States. That is true. Yes. So, but that's where most people get around that loophole is because Toyota is pretty much what Lexus is also. They're, the parts are very interchangeable. Oh, yeah. At least I remember the, that being the case a few years ago. I don't know if it's changed since then, but I wouldn't be surprised if it hasn't. I think the two, I think 2005 and below are interchangeable. After that, they're kind of iffy. Yeah. Depending I, on certain models. I just remember them being very famous back then. They were using Camry parts yeah. for, for their Lexus, and you know, some of them would still have the Toyota logo on them. Actually, I remember seeing um, um, one of my uh, uh, Lexus that my dad was fixing. Every single auto piece inside the engine were Toyota pieces. Yeah. Well, and then the window itself was Toyota, too. I was just like, huh. Yeah, they had the little safety glass logo. Yep, yep. Well, I also have a list here of the top five crossover SUVs uh, in the compact SUV market. Ooh. And uh, right now, and this is only for m month one of the year, which is January. Now, usually what they do is at the end of every year, they release it. And actually, that was our first episode, the top, uh, remember that, the top t 10 cars of 2011. Well, this is the first month of sales for uh, January I still, in total. I, I still can't believe Hyundai made it on the top 15. Yeah, right in there, yeah. But uh, let's see, with uh, number one being the Honda CRV with 18,960 units sold, took the top spot among the uh, SUVs and crossovers in the compact sector. So these are the really small SUVs. I, I, I drove one. It's actually not that bad. Yeah, I mean, uh, the styling doesn't look that bad. It, I, it looks okay, I think. Um, besides the dinosaur there. And, uh, I yeah, swear, if, it looks like a turtle. If you're watching uh -huh. the uh, webcast, we're not going to be putting the pictures along with the webcast anymore, but we do have the pictures on the new B3 Radio Network website and on their photo gallery, which is linked underneath our main show page. You can see the pictures that we're talking about, and that's b3radionetwork.webs.com. And you can always see... Uh, Always uh, send us an email at speedradiob3 at yahoo.com. We're also on Twitter, so go ahead and follow us there at b3 underscore network. And on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe there. And also on Facebook. And we also have the phone number 626-532-7154. That's 626-532-7154. So there's all ways of kinds of means to communicate with us. <laughs> and number two on the list, I found pretty 
cool because it did drop it used to be number one for a long while which was the ford escape selling 17,259 units Ooh, barely beat them yeah barely by what is that about a little less three, than a thousand yeah a little less than a thousand uh with that one being said that the ford escape uh yes this is the ford escape uh, outsold the crv numerous times beforehand but this month uh the crv completely beat it by almost a thousand units sold hmm. like well like i said though i've been in the crv it's not that bad it's it's pretty comfortable for for like a mid-sized person <laughs> number three on the list is the chevy equinox and the chevy equinox is um has been at selling at a steady pace so it's nothing new for chevy but it's showing that they have steady sales which means they're not having to worry about other car companies taking it for a month and going back down up and down they've been third i think they've been between third and fourth place for like almost the last year and a half so their segment has already they already know their place and i think they're happy with where they are not a bad looking vehicle i think its stance is very good i like how chevy's doing that split grill that horizontal split with all their vehicles now sort of how dodge does with the the quad grill they always have that mm, yeah that, that um the four-piece grill it seems like a lot of car coming and bmw does does what the old pontiacs used to do the uh two grills split vertically mm. yeah that's what pontiac used to do as well and in number four, there is the Toyota RAV4. Oh, I'm sorry. The Equinox sold 13,662 vehicles. But number four is the Toyota RAV4, which sold 9,819. I think you're reading that wrong. Uh, no, up no. over here, I have the uh, Toyota RAV4. No, it's, it says Nissan Rogue. I'm reading it here. It's Toyota RAV4. Oh, well, I'm yeah, sorry. From, from <laughs> the story, it, it's here. Um, I guess they missed, uh, mislabeled it here. Yeah. Actually, it's funny. I have it. Yeah, actually, you are you are right because whatever reason this is wrong here. But the yeah, so number five, sorry, number four is the niece. Uh, no, what am I saying? No, there seems to be an error with the stories. <laughs> one because I have two different sources here that I'm uh, that I use for the show, and one of them showing that. Okay, well, either way, number four and five are a mismatch. Um, but then again, if you look at it, how close they are, they're only they're only off by about a hundred. Yeah, yeah, because I'm reading. I get my 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 news a lot. The main sources are from Motor Trend and from uh, Automobile, and there's another network called um, what's it called, Car Buzz. Hmm. And uh, but at least they got the the names right. But the next one would be the Nissan Rogue, which sold at nine thousand nine hundred and four vehicles for the for that month. Not too bad for. And keep in mind, these are month sales. That looks more like a minivan. Yes, it does. I I think it's that back end. It looks sort of like w what the old um, uh, what the what the what was Toyota's minivan? The um, the Sienna. Yeah. Do they still ma manufacture that vehicle? Yep. Didn't it get smaller? Oh. No, it got bigger. It got bigger with more uh, with more tech in there. Because I know with a lot of minivans, at least with the Americans, they're starting to go smaller again. Oh. Well, the uh, the new the, the 2012 Sienna, fully loaded. It's bigger than I think it's like six inches bigger than the old one, and it has um um two um two power windows on the sliding doors, built-in DVD player. It has a satellite radio, Sirius uh, Sirius satellite radio, and some other stuff like that. Oh, that's pretty cool. And I think it's built-in GPS too. So it's pretty much a fully loaded yeah, vehicle. It's a fully loaded vehicle, yes. I do like the Toyota Rav4 though. I think it does have nice styling features for a Toyota. I think it, the front end looks very appealing. It has a nice body layout, body structure. I think, and also it, it for what it is being a compact SUV, it looks like it can actually go off roading, kind of like it. it it's it can. Yeah. Oh, it can. Well, if technically it's, I, speaking, I mean, if yeah. if it's packaged accordingly. I'm yes. Sure. Exactly. And number, I, there is a number six, and I have to mention it because it is listed here, an honorable mention, which is the Jeep Wrangler. Now, this oh. is like the first time in a long while that Jeep has actually been so close. And it even states that if uh, Jeep was able to keep these numbers going the way they are, they should be number uh, five next month. Hmm. And their sales have been increasing. Uh, for whatever, the popularity of the Jeep has been growing a lot within the last year. For I, sales and marketing, at least. I think um, the I think Modern Warfare t Three had something to do with it, 
because of that special edition one that came well, out? Well, uh, that on the, the video well, game was, segment, yeah. yeah but I, I don't think for sales that accounted to anything. Oh, well. But I think more or less it's because of the takeover with from Fiat. And their production quality has increased oh. the uh, Chrysler Corporation tremendously. I saw a Fiat on the street. A 500? Yeah. A small little two I'm not one. a fan of Fiat. I don't think they belong in the U.S. I really don't like them at all. There's a reason why they dis were discontinued in the 80s and they left America. I, I because they were though. cheap, horrible economy <laughs> cars. No, I could have sworn though. I was walking by. I thought it was a Mini Cooper tour. I looked at the front, the uh, the grill, and it said Fiat. I was my only reaction was really really yeah I know they have a, they're going to have a turbo version of that 500 it's called it, the it's something italian so I can't pronounce it but it's like the a birth the uff birth or something like that so it's it has like uh, 80 more horsepower or something like that in its Ooh, little engine yeah 160 but also I know that Fiat has sales haven't been great they've been good but not great and I think more or less Americans like to have big numbered horsepower and that vehicle only has about like I believe uh, under a hundred horsepower I mean for a small car like that it's okay if you think about it but it doesn't look good on paper no so I think that's what's hurting their sales Anyway, we'll continue with the next list. I do have the top five mid-size crossovers, and there are some pretty cool vehicles in that list. This is Speed on the B3 Radio Network. This is the B3 Radio Network. B3 Radio Network. Visit us online at b3productionstudios.webs.com. Welcome back to Speed on the B3 Radio Network. I am Brian Bombarios, and behind the boards, Boone Tarn, Guy Rahorn. Hello. You want to go into the mid-size crossovers really quick? Sure. All right, well, number one, I did find very happy to see this. And again, like I said from last segment, it's Jeep with the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Now, I do like what Jeep's done. Have you seen the new Jeeps? The not, Grand Cherokees? Not entirely, no. Well, there it is right there. I think it's very good looking with that front end. For whatever reason, Dodge, the Chrysler Corporation, especially with the Dodges uh, and the Jeeps, they were making the eyes. Did you ever see those? With like, They had this circle bubbly effect underneath the... Uh, on top of the bumper, underneath the the um, the uh, the light fixture, they were kind of like round, circular. You know how the Mustang has the circular lights inside of the square? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's what they were doing with the with the Dodges and the and the Jeeps for a little while, huh. where they had like it, the lights just looked circular. I, I just didn't. I don't know. It was like a styling feature that they were trying out, and I didn't like it. It just made the car look like a sad face. <laughs> but uh, I I like the f the fact that the it's a sad yeah. Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you see the sales back then? <laughs> I can see why it was so sad. Yeah, and the quality. <laughs> but they have uh, completely redesigned it. I mean, if you've seen those commercials, it's just a complete off-roading vehicle. It has that capability. But the inside, it's it's pretty cool the way Jeeps reef structured and refocused their whole stuff where jeep's uh exterior is all about off-roading you know you it has the four by four action it has the airbag suspension so you can lift the vehicle you can climb over rocks and stuff which has always been jeep's thing they have the trail rated uh standard that they always badge in all their jeeps or at least most of them unless you're buying like a bottom level entry vehicle which i believe right now is the compass not a bad looking it's like what the old um jeep grand cherokee used to look like it's a very good small uh, beginner segment Jeep. But hmm. the problem is that the the only way you can get it in stick is if you buy the the, uh, the uh, rear-wheel drive only model. Oh, really? If you want 4x4, four four, you have to get an automatic. Well, so what's the point? For me, I want to get a stick, so what would be the point of getting a Jeep if it's not 4x4? Four four? That is so, true. I mean, for me, it kind of beats it out. But anyway, good-looking vehicle. It's number one on the list, and it, it sold... In, in January sales alone, over 10,000. It almost sold 11. It was 10,683 units sold Whoa. just for January sales. Pretty good. Next vehicle on the list is the Ford Explorer, selling at 9,966. Now, what do you think about the new styling on the Explorer? They just refreshed it. I think it was released last year, I believe. 
I don't know. Can you zoom in on that picture? Yeah. Uh, it's They changed its body style. What Ford has been doing, and with a lot of companies now, it's no longer built on a full body frame. Uh, you know how the pickup trucks are built on full body frames, where they have the two uh, steel beams underneath? Oh, yeah. And uh, most, like, smaller cars, like, you know, the Cobalts or, you know, the cheap economy car. Well, not cheap economy. Most cars nowadays are built with unibody frames. Hmm. Um, this vehicle is actually unibody. A giant, it's a, a mid-sized crossover unibody. It's not bad. It has that Ford Edge styling. Uh, I think we mentioned with the Fusion. Remember how they have the Ford's using that bold face grill yeah. where they have the split horizontals like that? I mean, not bad. I think the eyes are a bit droopy. I think the I think it, it'll sell for most average um, people in America or, you know, mid-sized vehicle buyers but i think the front end could improve immensely i do know that it has very good technologies with the ford sync and i heard sorry um i'm surprised the ford's uh upgrading their technology like a lot now yeah i know they have the more uh, the uh redefined my ford touch system which is their yeah. infotainment system for sirius xm satellite radio uh, navigation all that stuff but yeah ford's coming out with some good tech though and I have to admit that. It does show because number three on the list, again, another Ford. And <laughs> that is a good-looking Ford, the Ford Edge, selling at 8,315 units. Very aggressive front end. You know what this front end reminds me of? Like the Dodge Dart. How the, the grill, the, the this little facade thing underneath the grill kind of extends below into the bumper. I, I'm a fan of that. It just looks menacing. It looks nice. I like the tail lamps, how they're very sharply tuned. So very good, and I like those. What have those got to be at? like at least eighteen inch wheels on that vehicle? And those are this is a, a a photo released by Ford, so those are maybe not standard wheels, but they are available wheels from the actual Ford Motor Com Ford Motor Company. Eighteens maybe. They're low know. profile. Yeah. But it's not it's not that bad though. Yeah. The, car, the compact doesn't look that bad. Yeah, it, it's pretty good. Well, there's a, I think, believe there's a midsize SUV. Oh, midsize. Okay, yeah, my bad. pretty good looking vehicle. And I have to say, the number four on the list what? actually, what? it doesn't look that bad. Kia? Is the Kia Sorento selling at seven thousand three hundred and twenty-two units a this Kia month? Kia made it in. Yeah, but huh. uh, but look at that front end. I mean, it actually looks, dare I say it, decent. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I've been as a child. Uh, whenever I would hear Kia. I would always go, ew. Because they were always the cheap, horrible Korean car of the old, you know, past. You know, do you did you ever get that impression of Kia? When I was growing up, Kia was the one car. It was like, for American cars, it was Saturn. You did not want to get into Saturn. And in, uh, for the Japanese uh, or for the Asian markets, you just did not want to get into Kia. And so I remember growing up as a kid, and the two vehicles I never, ever liked and never wanted to be in was Saturns and Kias. <laughs> They're just very horribly made. They were cheap, horrible cars that should have just never existed. But Kia has really redefined their image and their company of restructuring it. They are getting very good. Like the new, is it the Optima, I believe? It looks really nice. I think that was the one that had that Super Bowl commercial last year with the Dark Vader, the little kid. No, that was VW. I know that was okay. No, that was, was a VW. A, there was another one that Kia did uh, that was similar to that, uh, where they had something with a kid, and but it had a really nice car in it. Like it looked uh, really good. And I think hmm. it was the Optima. Is that Kia? Kia Optima, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, it was really nice looking. And then number five, the Toyota Highlander, selling at six thousand eight hundred and fifty-six units this month in the January two thousand twelve sales. Now, from the picture, it's kind of hard to see it, but. That actually, I don't like the grill at all. <laughs> Toyota's grill is kind of a hit and miss sometimes. Yeah, a lot, a lot of their, a lot of their grills are hit and miss. Yeah, they're kind of just too business. You know what I mean? They look just they have nothing going on. It really doesn't give any attributes to the styling or anything. But I mean, they have been the top five for the last five months, though. With, five months. Well, this is their one of their top selling vehicles. I know that it's oh, it. It gets in the top five every once in a while, but it usually stays within the top ten guaranteed. Oh wow! Most of the time, that's not bad then. Yeah. So that's our uh, top five list of the compact and midsize SUVs. And then what you were telling me, you had a story or something? Oh yeah, it's a small little story about. Okay, you know how um, you never want to get a a Fiat, right? 
Well, I personally yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah. Well, what about the uh, smart car? No. My own personal opinion. I know BMW actually, what, do they own that company, the smart company? Uh, I know they, you can buy a smart is it is it BMW or is it Mercedes? No, it's I, I, I've I've never seen it on a Mercedes lot. Okay, I, I believe it's BMW, isn't it? I think BMW owns a majority. Yeah, of it. but I know you can buy a smart off of a BMW yeah. dealership. Yeah. Well, um, you know how the uh, what's it called the Fiat only has about ninety horsepower or so. Yes, I, I believe it's ninety eight horsepower oh, okay, if I remember my okay. stats correctly. Ninety eight. Well, um, there was a group of people that bought a smart car. They completely took out his guts. The uh, they took out the engine. They took out the transmission. But you know what they you know what they ended up putting up inside it. They put two six hundred cc engines inside the tr- uh, inside the back. Oh, the motorcycle engines. Yes, <laughs> yes. So and they redid the uh, the body the body of the entire thing. Dude, that that be <laughs> that smart car beat almost every single car in the lot. Really? Yeah. Wow. Just that little smart car alone. I was just, Caught me by surprise. <laughs> yeah, it actually does. I'm actually looking at the new Fiat, the new Fiat 500. I'm just don't like that look. Actually, it, doesn't it? To I don't know, maybe to you, but to me, it looks like it's copying, it's mimicking the the Beetle, the the Volkswagen. Actually, bun. I was gonna say that at a certain angle, it looks like the Beetle. I mean, it is. Man, these are some ugly Fiats from back in the day. I'm looking at these old ones. Is that? <laughs> is that a, supposed to be a convertible? Yeah, there's this one picture. I'll probably put it up on the website of the Fiat 500 Jolly. Jolly. Man, I don't know what's with the name. Some of them have weird names, but this is like a car with no doors. It has a convertible top that's a canopy for like if you have a picnic, and it looks like it has a a woven a woven like um. Chair. chair made out of like some kind of uh, the basket material. Weirdest thing I've seen in a long time for a car. <laughs> wow. Talking about other weird things, I did find and it isn't weird. It's just I don't know if the concept art will look very good. I, I think to me it looks very good in certain lines. I think for minivans it's a hit and miss whether you have something that's um, Oh, this is a minivan we're talking about. Yes, actually. Uh, well, I don't know if you would call it. it n- nowadays, you wouldn't consider it a minivan or yeah. a, quote mini, but it's the one that started it. It's the Chrysler uh, town and country back in the 80s. Uh, they invented the minivan. Hmm. But now they're trying to re- resurrect the, uh, trying to make their own image. Uh, you know, Chrysler has done the 300, totally redesigned it, made it look like a Bentley. And <laughs> then they redid it with the 200, bring, killing off the Sebring and bringing the 200, which uh, we dis, uh, did an episode on that recently. And remember, s- sales skyrocketed over 150% just by a name change and, and st- restyling the, the, the Modern vehicle. Modern style. Yeah. yeah. Well, the Chrysler 700C concept minivan, which was at the Detroit Auto Show. Now, this is some of the pictures of the new minivan. Kind of edgy and very express, you know, very expressive for a minivan. Something that's very family oriented. I mean, this vehicle has a black hood. This is all concept stuff that you. It'll probably never make it on the market. Very it's, long. It's got a carbon gated. fiber hood. Oh, what appears to be, yeah, the windows in the back strike me as odd. It's sort of like a spaceship meets. What? I, I believe it's for. Uh, just for styling reasons, I believe that the, there's a, a section of sheet metal between the front uh, window that you know that lowers and the rear passenger windows in the back that that are stationary. And then there's one giant hand. I just, I don't think it's going to ever come to production, but mm-hmm. it is an interesting concept to see them you know derive from the minivan from what it once was with the wooden the wood panels on the side and this very boxy look. Because traditionally, American cars have been very boxy. But it is very nice to see that the minivan's uh, shape is... They're trying to change it, at least. Yeah. But I wouldn't buy that, though. I, I, I don't like the uh, the M- side. Yeah. even Like, if you had to buy a minivan, uh, I can name other ones. I, I wouldn't buy this. Um, no. it's I think it's a great way for Chrysler to try to differentiate themselves L- from the market. Like, it looks like they're trying to put a sporty look to the van. 
Like, yeah. Like, really, like, because if you look at the interior, the, the chairs. Well, again, this is all, all concept. It concepts that go crazy overboard with stuff. Yeah. This is a, a general idea. And Chrysler has mentioned that if there is a lot of interest for the vehicle, they will go ahead and make a production version of it. So obviously a lot of things will probably be left over. Very few cars that make it from uh, from concept form to showroom floors, they change dramatically in most cases. Very few cases. The only ones I can ever remember recently that were from concept to, to production, production that almost never changed was the Camaro. Oh, that's no, 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 that's there, the one. one. There is one that just came out uh, recently. I think it was the NSX. Oh, the oh the Acura, yeah, the Acura yeah. NSX. That, yeah. I think that one's still concept. Mode, is it? No, actually, no. There's a commercial for it with Jerry Seinfeld that just came <laughs> out during the Super Bowl. Very funny commercial. But you know what? I I noticed they flubbed on something. I heard it's supposed to be a 2015 model, but on the commercial it said 2012. Huh. I don't know if that's a mistake or maybe, maybe I think they're pushing it forward. Like maybe now, yeah. It that is a very good cool car. Maybe uh, I'm pretty sure there's a story we can get to it next week because that is a very very nice looking car. I love how they did the uh, hybrid all wheel drive. Yes, with uh, the I believe front, the there's front wheel is electric and the back wheels are gas. Yeah, powered by gasoline. Yep. So that means those front wheels are very torque hungry because elect electric uh, electric motors are very torque happy. Oh yeah. Uh, while gasoline engines are very good with power and long propulsion, like long driving or acceleration after the initial start. So so it'll be interesting to see the. Uh results of that car yeah that car i would be very interested in acura sort of been that brand for me where i've i haven't hated it or loved it isn't that middle zone yeah because actually for me they've never done anything to Too spark extreme. my interest oh okay no i got gotcha. you very few uh, also for me i don't really pay attention to many acuras anyway there are not too many around where i am Oh, what oh, you mean around this? Yeah, area. Oh. I just don't see too many. No, no, no. I, I can't. I can't blame. Them. I've only seen a couple actors drive by. And even then, though, they're kind of, they're kind of like run down and like old, like really old. Yeah, but I that car does look pretty good. The NS uh, X. Yeah, NSX. Yeah. That, but uh, I know the Camaro. Pretty much the only thing that changed with the Camaro from its concept stage to production were pretty much the rear view mirrors, the side That's mirrors. It? That's, That's it. I think the the initial concept. If you look at them, they were very like sharp and thin and very like they pulled away from the car a lot and then the new ones are kind of just they just kind of look like almost normal ones hmm. i think it was a styling feature they just decided we don't need it it looks it makes the car look weird well, and i actually test drove one about a week a uh, week ago i had to take my truck in because it was making some squeaky noises on the on my wheels when i would brake it wasn't the brakes but long story short while i was waiting i was like hey let me test I test drove the V8 SS2. It's pretty much every option you want on that Camaro is that's available besides the sunroof. That was the only option that was not on that car was the sunroof. I hate you. <laughs> 426 horsepower V8 engine. Should have came to pick me up, man. <laughs> with the direct and fuel injection, rear wheel drive, nice. six speed with the first short shifts. Mm. Oh, dude. Softest clutch I've ever had uh, feeling in a car. Don't forget, you can always call us at 626-532-7154 or email us at speedradiob3 at yahoo.com or check out this show and other shows that are available on the B3 Radio Network site, which is b3radio.webs.com. I am Bron Bon Barrios, and behind the boards, Boontar MacGyver Horn. Don't forget, we webcast every show and series on the B3 Radio Network. This is Speed on the B3 Radio Network.